this is Chris Santiago from PagePro and today we are going to walk you through the process of migrating Next.js project from Vercel to AWS. Jakub, can you please explain, um, please describe the project uh, that we are speaking about and uh, then let's go to the migration process. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so the project was using the CMS, uh, Headless CMS Sanity in, as a, a data source, and we used Next.js for our uh, front end. Uh, we use Vercel to host our application, and with the time, uh, we've um, added some features that were hosted on the AWS, like Cognito, like uh, email sending, and uh, some other tools. Uh, and we decided to migrate to AWS because we need to keep everything in one place. Uh, so, yeah, I will share the screen and that will be easier for me to tell you yes. how it looks Maybe like. Maybe I would just add that uh, we wanted to release the, the, the project very quickly. Uh, so we agreed with the client that the first version will go to Vercel, but then client wanted to, in the maintenance phase, Move up, move it to AWS because he hosts everything in uh, AWS uh, infrastructure. So that was the main reason of uh, migrating. And Jakub, uh, yeah, what what was the process? What were, were the the main steps? Uh, yeah. So the first step was to decide uh, either we need to go with serverless or containers, uh, and we decided to go serverless because client doesn't have so much traffic and he doesn't rely on uh, resources on computations, and we're fine with servers serverless limits. Uh, so uh, we will go with serverless. It's also like a pay-as-you-go solution versus fixed price. Uh, so we are similar to what Vercel provides us. The next step was to migrate something to AWS. We decided to use uh, SSD uh, as our tool. Uh, it's an uh, infrastructure as a code tool that lets you write your infrastructure in a code and then uh, creates all of the services on the AWS thanks to some um, permissions. So, uh, yeah, we use that. And also we've... Uh, we started with bare minimum, so we've just created an XJS application that was uh, without any extra functionalities uh, like image optimizations, like uh, any connections to database, etc. And we pushed that to AWS uh, using SSD just to check if that will work. So we check the rendering, SSG, SSR, if they work, middlewares, etc. And we were fine with that solution, so we've decided to uh, migrate next functionalities. Uh, one of them was Redis because we've used uh, some functionality that was gathering some informations and based on that information, uh, we had a cron in the background that was uh, checking that info and sent some emails uh, like three days before something. Uh, so we've created this Redis service in SSD. Uh, we configured that. We've Push that to AWS. Uh, it almost worked out of the box. We just had one issue because we've misread the documentation, but in general, it was a very easy step. The next one was with cron jobs. As I mentioned, we had a cron job that was uh, checking the data from Redis and uh, let's say send an email. Uh, so we need to add the cron job. There is also a service like that in SSD configuration. So we use that. We've set the tab uh, and. Yeah, it was almost problemless. <laughs> so yeah, except the ones that we have with misreading the documentation, something like that, we didn't have any issues. So we have like uh, two basic Next.js functionality now and some uh, extra functionality added. Next step was uh, image optimization. Uh, luckily for us, we are using Sanity and Sanity has its own image optimization. So we just need to add a loader to next images. So we transferred our optimization from Next.js to Sanity. If we didn't have that, we need to write our custom Lambda that would do the optimizations for us or we need to get rid of them. The next step was to create some automations because we were doing that manually. Uh, so we've used uh, GitHub Actions that were just creating the SST build, uh, and it was creating everything in the AWS in the background. Uh, but we've 
creating the CI/CD, we've uh, already find out that we are missing the environment variables configurations. Uh, we've used GitHub secrets to keep all of them here. Uh, in the future, probably we will migrate that to AWS. Uh, there is a service for that. I can't remember the name, but where you can keep your environment variables. So we will have every, almost everything there. But the next feature that we were considering was the edge network. Uh, and again, luckily for us, uh, we were not rely on that uh, because most of our traffic was in the UK. So uh, we just created all of our infrastructure in the UK locate localization, and it was fine for our results. Uh, if we would have a more global traffic, then probably we will need to set up uh, some things like Edge Lambda uh, that can handle that in a similar way as Varsal, but of course we will need some extra work with that. Uh, and yeah, that, that was the most important features that we need to migrate. Uh, to sum up, they were kind of easy to migrate. Maybe that's our scenario that uh, was not super complex and we were able to manage that without the devops help but yeah uh, what helped us was performing this migration step by step as i pointed that out so just start with bare minimum and check your reversal services that you are using functionalities that you are using and try to migrate them step by step not all of them at once because you will be uh, overwhelmed by the AWS infrastructure and also with the, all of the configuration that you need to add. So yeah, that's, that will be that for, for the migration. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Jakob. That, uh, that was very useful. And um, I also want to invite you to our next event. Uh, this is around Versal cost optimization uh, series. So next event is on 20th of March. And on this event, we are going to uh, prepare a very detailed plan of migrating from uh, Versal to uh, self-hosting solutions. So uh, please join our webinar. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's next week, so sign up in the, on the link below. below and uh, yeah, I hope we can see you, you there. Jakub, do you have any anything uh, to add on, on the end and uh, yeah maybe you can tell uh, our watchers why they should uh, attend yeah uh, first of all it's not only to uh, migrating from Versal. if you are not set up yet at all you can also have some benefits from uh, joining us uh, you will see how and what are the possibilities how to like start uh your migration or your deployment process and uh, yeah what tools you will need or uh step by step guide how to do that i think it it will be very helpful for you okay great so see you on uh, 20th of march very uh, actionable uh, very helpful uh, material about self-hosting uh, next.js project see you see bye you bye there.